Aloha, everybody. This is Heidi St. John. I'm broadcasting today from Kona, Hawaii. And today we're going to talk about joy. What does it mean to have the joy of the Lord in spite of whatever circumstances are happening around you? The Bible says that we can be joyful. Stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. All right, so I'm glad you guys have joined me. Before I get going today, I want to remind you that we've got a new study coming up. I think I told you yesterday that I am going to be jumping now back into the driver's seat at MomStrong International. So I took an 18-month hiatus to run for Congress, and I'll give you a little bit of a, a brief update on that as well. But a little bit of a, a, a hiatus that I took, and we've got a wonderful writing team who've been uh, filling in for me. They've done a great job. But we are making some wonderful, wonderful uh, changes over at MomStrong International, and I think you guys are going to be excited. Some of the studies that we have had finished before are going to be available for purchase. So for those of you who are interested in looking uh, at the studies that we do there, possibly doing them for group studies. Also, you can become a leader with MomStrong International. This is a really important time for God's people to be mentoring other believers, young believers and inspiring um, hope and um, encouragement in the people that are around you. Because I believe, and you guys have heard me say this before, but I, I really do believe that we are, we're in for some, some rough water ahead. And I'm not going to touch on that today. I think in the days to come, I'm going to hit on some things that I think are markers that we should be looking at at the church, but God's people are needed in positions of leadership, in positions of authority, we're needed in mentoring young people. We're needed. Uh, we're needed in the culture very, very much. And so, my heart in starting Momstrong International six years ago was to say, "Hey, I want to see mothers in the Word because you can't pass on what you don't possess." And so, if you want to get stronger in the Lord, uh, join me at Momstrong International. You don't have to be a mother to do it. If you are a mom, though, it has a particular. We do something called Kids Strong at the end of each study. So if you've got uh, children at home and you want to teach them as you're learning, it's a great exercise for you just to be able to teach the the Word of God. We're not supposed to just um, absorb God's Word. We're supposed to be mentoring and teaching others. So MomStrongInternational dot com. Check it out. And I will be teaching there uh, very, very soon. So I'm excited about that. Today, I want to focus on something that God's been teaching me over the last probably nine months in particular. But I, I noticed it can be very easy for us, depending on what we're going through in our lives, it can be very, very easy for us to lose our joy. But the Bible teaches us that joy is a fruit of the Spirit. And so what does that mean? Well, it means it has nothing to do with your circumstances. So you could be broke. You could have lost your job. You could be struggling through the death of a loved one. You could be, uh, you know, running for Congress like I did and being, being surrounded by uh, criticism and unkind people and still have joy. Why? It comes from the Lord. And that's the first place that we find it is we have our joy in the Lord. And as we abide in him and he is in us, that's where we find it. And one of the most powerful ways to find joy in the Lord is through prayer and worship. The Bible tells us that we are supposed to rejoice in the Lord. Corey Ten Boom said, and she should know, right? This is a woman who lost uh, almost all of her family members to the Nazis uh, in, an, in Nazi concentration camps. She was at Birkow and also at Auschwitz. And if you've never read The Hiding Place, I would just encourage you to do it. Oh my goodness, there's, a, there's an incredible story to read uh, as a family about people who have struggled, particularly the Ten Boom family, but people who have struggled and come out on the other side of suffering with their joy intact. Because as Corey Ten Boom so rightly said, joy is not the product of your circumstances. Joy is the unmistakable, and I love that she said that, the unmistakable sign of the presence of God. Meaning it's, it's God at work in your life. It's God doing something and you recognize, hey, this world is not my home. Uh, I seek a city to come whose architect and builder is God. I'm just passing through. And when you know that you're just passing through and you know that you're going to see God face to face someday, that you're going you're gonna to be able to sing at his feet and to worship him, it helps you to lift your eyes up to the heavens. And so as we praise God in worship, the Bible teaches us that our hearts, that the natural outgrowth of that is that our hearts are filled with joy. And as we worship God, we should be asking him, fill us with your spirit. That's another thing I'm going to be talking about at Mom's Strong International in the coming months. Um, God had me just deep into, obviously, I read, the, I, I read through the book of Nehemiah nine times during my run for Congress, but I also did a pretty in-depth study on the Holy Spirit. 
and just trying to understand more about how the Holy Spirit works. And so as you are worshiping God today, and you and there are so many things that can be an act of worship. Men, as you're heading off to, to work, consider that work today is an act of worship to God. Who is it that your life can impact? Who is it that you can talk to, who your words will touch? Uh, what is your ministry gonna be when you get home from work today, the ministry that God's given you to those that are in your life, starting with your wife and your children? Um, God does that. And we ask God to fill us with his Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Philippians 4, verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I will say rejoice. Now, this, of course, written by the Apostle Paul, who knew a, a thing or two about suffering, right? This is a guy who's been imprisoned. He's been tortured. He's been beaten to within an inch of his life. And he understood the joy, like Corey Ten Boom. He understood joy was not dependent on the circumstances. Joy was the unmistakable sign of the presence of God. And that's what he's saying. Rejoice in all circumstances. Rejoice in the Lord always. Always, he didn't say rejoice if you're in Hawaii. I mean, I'm I'm recording this from Hawaii, and so it's it it feels pretty easy to rejoice in the Lord when you know I can look out as I'm doing right now over a, a stunningly beautiful landscape and hear birds singing and uh, and the temperature is perfect here in Hawaii. It really, really is. Uh, it, you can go well. It's easy for you to rejoice. You're sitting in Hawaii, true. But guess what happens in Hawaii? Cancer, death happens here. Uh, people lose loved ones, children walk away from the Lord. I met a man uh, at the airport the other day and um, just briefly, you know, and I didn't, I, but I overheard him talking to a person next to him saying he couldn't believe it. He met someone who thought that he was a Satanist. And I was like, well, maybe that's because you're wearing a giant pentagram on your jacket. <laughs> maybe that's why. Uh, so even here in Hawaii, you know, the, the spiritual struggles are real. We live in a fallen world. And Paul's saying, I'm not going to give you any excuses. Rejoice in the Lord always. And so maybe you're listening to this and you've become grumpy. Have you guys ever met like a, uh, like a grumpy old woman or a grumpy old man? You know, someone who just cannot, you know, just make me smile. I dare you. You know, <laughs> you can just see that sort of sour look and that sour expression. I can tell you, I am prone to that. I know some of you are like, no, no, I really am. I mean, sometimes I have to just force myself to just be sort of this extroverted joy. But just like we learned with the woman who was teaching the hula the other day, she was saying the most important thing about the hula dance is not the dance itself. It's the expression on your face. It's that outward expression of an inward joy that you have. And Paul is saying it's not dependent on your circumstances. So no, whatever you're going through right now, maybe you're looking at homeschooling for the fall and you feel overwhelmed by it. Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. Let your kids see that you are rejoicing. That joy is contagious. Romans 15, 13 says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. In other words, you believe that God is who he says he is. You believe that Jesus is coming again. You believe that your sins are washed away, that that, um, Jesus washed them and you are whiter than snow before the Lord. So you, you ask the Lord, God, fill me with, with joy and peace, that peace that passes understanding as I believe. Why? So that the power of the Holy Spirit will help you abound in hope. I think that hope and joy are byproducts of each other, this peace that we have in the Lord Jesus as we walk out this life in him. And so even though you might look around and you'd say, well, look what's happening in the culture or look what's happening in the news right? More and more of this uh, gender affirming demonic garbage being pushed on our children in children's hospitals. And again, if you guys are not following my Instagram, I would just encourage you to do it because I'm sharing a lot of videos and such there that will ex- open your eyes to what's happening around us. We, it's very easy for us, I think, to lose our hope if we've lost our joy, because I think those, the two of them are inextricably linked. Because when we have joy, we always have hope. That hope that comes from knowing that my, my, um, my, my hope isn't in this world. It's ahead of me still. My hope is not uh, rooted in something that's temporal that the Bible says is going to pass away. And so that's why Paul in Romans is saying, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. And if ever there was a time that we needed hope, boy, you guys, uh, that time is right now. We're going to take a quick break. I'll be right back. 
the Apostle Paul knew a lot about growing in the Lord in spite of suffering. And I was writing in my journal the other day. I don't typically read my journal pages here at the podcast, but I wanted to read something that I wrote as I was just journaling. And I wrote 33 years, just 33. I just wrote the number out, 33. 33 years of blessing. The blessing and the joy that I found in being married to my husband. And the joy that it gave me to look back on those 33 years. And I look back on them with joy. And it's not because every moment was a joyful moment. There were many, many difficult moments. There was a, uh, the season that we, we lost our home. That was a, a difficult moment. Uh, certainly, we've had uh, struggles as Jay was a pastor for a lot of years. It's part of my um, passion for the church, to see the church really have a, a role in the culture instead of encouraging its people to just hide behind the four walls of the church. I would look back on those seasons of our marriage and say, man, those are difficult. We lost a, a baby to miscarriage uh, toward the end or the beginning of the second trimester years ago. Uh, we lost our fourth child. And that was a season where we struggled, struggled to understand why God would allow something like that to happen. What did we, if, was there something we had done wrong? But the fact of the matter is God allows us to go through seasons that are difficult and challenging. And as we walk with the Lord, he fills us with joy. And it's not like a, a giddy joy. It's not like, oh, I'm so happy that I'm going through this trial, or I'm just so happy that that person, you know, just betrayed me or whatever it is. No, it's, it's a, a deep-seated gift. It's a fruit, the Bible calls it, a fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians chapter 5, starting in verse 22, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit, in other words, the things that we get from walking with the Lord are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. And I, I love that Paul was saying, listen, it doesn't matter where you are. You could, be, you could be standing before the Sanhedrin like Jesus was. You could be preparing to die. You could be being tortured like Corey Ten Boom, wrongfully imprisoned like Corey or, and her sister Betsy and the Apostle Paul and so many of the other apostles. And you can still have the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Because... No one can take them from you. That's what Paul's saying. There, there's no, there is no law. Like they can't take it from you. The world can't take it from you. A, a, a political race can't take it from you. The, the, the criticism of the world can't take it from you. You have it by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's a fruit of the Spirit. And I love that. In John 16, 24, it says, until now you've asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive. Why? That your joy would be made full. So it's learning how to ask in accordance with God's will. And the, the goal is not to just give you what you want. The, the goal is that your joy, which is a fruit of the spirit, would abound and people would see it. And so I guess I, I just want to ask you today as you're maybe considering what God wants you to do, or you're looking at homeschooling, or you've got a new job on the horizon, or maybe you're frustrated because like so many people, you're feeling like I am, this, the, the pressure of an economy that's absolutely in a free fall. Uh, I went here on Kona to get a jar of peanut butter because we're making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, take the kids down to the beach for the day in a jar, a small jar of peanut butter here is 10 bucks. And I, I just, I looked at my husband and I was like, my goodness, you know, uh, talk about uh, inflation. Boy, they're, they're really feeling it here. But no matter what it is that God has in front of you, no matter what you're facing, the Bible says that you can have fullness of joy and it comes from walking with the Lord. So that means, are you in his word? Are you asking him to fill you up? You guys, you can't give what you don't have. And that includes joy. Would your kids say that you're a joyful person? Would your, the, those who are closest to you, your coworkers, the people that see you every day, the people that see you at your worst, would they say that you're a joyful person? If you're walking with the Lord, the Bible says that should absolutely be what you're known for. In Psalm 16, verse 11, uh, David, who was, you know, this was a guy, the Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. And here's David, you know, coming before the Lord 
and he's asking God to give him, uh, to direct him. This should be, this should absolutely be where we start, right? He said, you make known to me the path of life and in your presence, there is fullness of joy at your right hand, our pleasures forever. And Paul in, in Romans 14 said, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating or drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy. How? In the Holy Spirit. Joy in the Holy Spirit. We, we don't often talk about the Trinity on this show. It's a, a doctrinal matter that I brought up. I think sometimes on Mailbox Monday and you will ask me about the doctrine of the Holy Spirit, but I think I'd love to study it more with you. And we will probably do that at Mom Strong International because the gift that God gave us in the Holy Spirit is a powerful, powerful tool. And being filled with the Holy Spirit, the result of that is fullness of joy. And it's not dependent on your circumstances. In First Peter uh, chapter one, we, we read that um, Peter saying, listen, though you haven't seen him, you love him. And though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. Here's Peter talking to uh, the, the men and women of his time who were suffering. These guys were actually suffering for their faith in Jesus. And as I look around at what's happening, particularly out of the Biden administration and the outright blatant propaganda that we are being forced to live through now here in the United States, like we, we know, who did we hear the other day? The, um, the uh, ambassador, I think the, the American ambassador to Taiwan, and she was saying, China is the freest, one of the freest nations in the whole world. It's a blatant lie, right? And we know that we're, we're surrounded by lies. And I believe, and I've said this before, that we will live to see the persecution of believers in this country. Uh, it's at the precipice. Unless we change leadership, unless we get uh, godly leaders who actually care about people instead of agendas, the church is seen as the enemy in many of these places. That's why you see so many woke churches. And Peter is addressing this, right? Peter didn't have, I mean, look up the apostle Peter. He didn't exactly have a, a, a peaceful end to his life. And he's trying to exhort them and encourage them. He's saying, listen, though you don't see him, you believe in him and you rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. Why? Because we know what's coming and our hope isn't here. Our hope is in things to come. Uh, I'm going to end today with uh, a passage from Nehemiah that I wrote over and over and over again during my run for Congress, because there were many moments in that run. I think the hardest thing about it for me was the uh, the unkind words that came from people who also said that they were that they were Christians, and I struggle to find joy, and I struggle to not become bitter. If you've ever been betrayed, if you've ever been in a place where you're like, "Listen, Lord, I know I heard your voice. You asked me to do this thing. I didn't necessarily want to do it, and and it's hard, but I walk. I'm walking this thing out in obedience because I feel this is what you you're asking me to do." Well, Nehemiah is out there trying to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, right? Nehemiah is like, oh my goodness, you know, the Bible says he wept over what was hap- what happened uh, to Jerusalem. He surveyed the walls, realized that they were unfortified and the city was unprotected. And so he asked uh, Xerxes if he could rebuild the wall and God had given him incredible favor with this king who was a pagan king. And what does Nehemiah get for his trouble? He gets attacked, attacked from his own people, attacked from inside and attacked from outside. And the Bible records that the reason that that was happening is because the full force of the enemy was coming against him because he was trying to offer protection and hope to the people of God. And Nehemiah is ministering to the people who are so weary, they're battle weary. You know, they've just, they're just uh, coming back from a Babylonian captivity. They've had a, a, a really, really rough stretch. Of course, they're in this Babylonian captivity. Why? Because they disobeyed God. They rebelled against God. Hello, anybody see the United States on that trajectory right now? I know I do. So Nehemiah and Nehemiah 8.10, ministering to them, and he said, go on your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready. For this day is holy to the Lord and do not be grieved for the joy of the Lord is what? It's your strength. It's your strength. And in the last 18 months, I have found so much strength and and actually joy. And I would not say I've been joyful every single moment. That would be uh, not true. (laughs) But so much joy in seeing the things that God was doing and is still doing 
And that is where we find our strength. So if you're struggling to find strength, if you're, if you're like, you know, Lord, I just don't know, look up. Because the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. In Psalm 94, verse 19, it says, when the cares of my heart are many, your consolations cheer my soul. They cheer my soul. God is the one who turns our mourning into dancing. He fills our hearts with joy. And so I want to encourage you, especially uh, you, you parents, let your children see that you are filled with joy and that joy, like Corey Ten Boom so rightly said, is not a product of your circumstances. Joy is the unmistakable sign of the presence of God. He is at work. He is always at work. And God's heart toward you is always ever, only good. So I hope the Lord just fills you with the joy that comes from him today. And I would love to hear from you. If you would like to reach out to me, you can do that by going to HeidiStJohn.com forward slash mailbox Monday. Remember, I'm going to be uh, resuming my role as the primary teacher at MomStrong International, and we're going to be studying identity. We're going to be going through the book of Nehemiah. We've got a lot of really great things coming up. And now is the time to join that group and you can join me by going to momstronginternational.com. If you're interested in having me come out and speak to your group, I would be honored and privileged to do so. And again, that information is at HeidiStJohn.com. Thank you guys so much for listening and for visiting our sponsors. Your uh, support of them is supporting this podcast. We love you guys. Have a great day. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength today. And I will see you back here tomorrow at the intersection of faith and culture.